Well, if you didn't know where I stood on the conflict in the Middle East, now you know. But my first guest may have a different view. He's Ken Roth, Executive Director of Human Rights Watch. Ken, thank you for being here. My pleasure, you know, Mike. My views on this are very strong, and it's based on the many, many times that I've been to the region. Mm -hmm. I, I know Human Rights Watch has said that you feel like Israel has committed war crimes. Um, help me understand, if they have not intentionally targeted children, which I don't believe they have, they've not intentionally targeted civilians, although civilians have unfortunately, tragically died. How is it a war crime if it is the result of Hamas massing people near their missile launchers? Well, let me give you three examples of the way it's doing it. One, it is targeting civilian structures that it shouldn't be. Um, for example, a hospital, where it didn't even allege that there was any Hamas military activity near it. Nonetheless, it destroyed the hospital. But Second no, they example, did feel that there was some uh, launchers there, and there had been terrorist activity and terrorist living in that place. No, no, where Mike, they had... no, what they said was that there was a rocket launcher 100 meters away, which when you're using precision weapons is a long ways away. Um, they, they targeted those rocket launchers, but they then destroyed the hospital. So that's one example of a war crime. Second example is there are times when they, they claim to be going after militants, but they do it when there are many, many civilians around. For example, killing nine men on, in a beach cafe watching the World Cup. Maybe there was one militant there. They never even claimed that. They never should have shot him with a bunch of civilians around. Or killing an entire family, 25 people, because maybe there was one militant there. The family was breaking the Ramadan fast. They should never have shot it. You know, but Ken, I, I, Those I've are never crimes. seen anybody suggest that Israel intentionally killed innocents. See, that's the point. That's not the standard alone. If you are targeting civilian structures, that's a war crime. If, if reckless, the civilian structures are, are filled with whether it's terrorists, and, and have you ever seen a nation that sent text messages, phone calls, leaflets, and even dropped dummy bombs in advance of the real bomb to basically say, get the heck out of here. But while Israel is telling people, get away from these sites, Hamas is telling them, don't get away, stay put. No. Israel does the right thing by giving warnings, but giving a warning if you're targeting the wrong thing doesn't justify it. So if they're hitting somebody's home, Giving a warning first doesn't make it justified. The Israelis have been very clear that they regret horribly the things that have happened to people that obviously are not the warriors. Mm -hmm. But I think what we would, I would like to believe that we would come to agreement with, this would all stop if Hamas would disarm. Israel has never attacked Gaza unprovoked. It's never gone in there. But they've got to destroy those tunnels. Why hasn't the UN, why hasn't the international nation come behind Israel, said, you step out of the way, let us go in there, disarm Hamas, take these tunnels out, and therefore there won't be this conflict. That would have avoided these civilian deaths. Yeah. No, and, and, and on the flip side, Hamas says, well, you know, if the UN would come in and lift the siege, then we wouldn't have to shoot the rockets. But I think the point to focus on is you can argue both ways who should see, you know, honor the ceasefire, who not, who's the aggressor, who's the defender. But what these aren't can, equals, Ken. No, no, these are not, not equals. equals. No, and and I want to clarify that I, I don't think you are, I hope you're not saying that Hamas and Israel are, are equally wrong. That's what I've been so disgusted no. with with the American policy. We've made it like that there's a moral equivalency. I can't find that. What you got to distinguish is the right or wrong of choosing to fight mm -hmm. and the separate issue of how you fight. And both Hamas and Israel have chosen how to fight violating the Geneva Conventions. Hamas doing it very deliberately, but Israel also in a different way deliberately violating the policy by shooting where there are going to be disproportionate civilian casualties, by shooting at civilian structures, by not taking adequate care to determine that the person they're firing at isn't a child rather than a fighter. You know, in, in, in light of what you're saying, by that token, Barack Obama, I would assume, has committed war crimes by drone, drone strikes and other activities that ended up killing civilians. Well, the, the issue is not do you kill civilians, but rather what are the rules that you follow? And frankly, Human Rights Watch has been very critical. No, let me say, in other words, if, if, if killing a civilian, if you're deliberately targeting a militant and there may be one civilian nearby, that may be an unfortunate mistake. But if you target a militant knowing that he's surrounded by civilians, that's a disproportionate harm to civilians. That is a war crime. What do We've you been do? very do critical you just of say, Obama. Let the, let the terrorists keep going? Because if they congregate these people near their near their weapon launchers, which they have done, and they have herded people into those, standing them on roofs with their bare chest as if to dare, hit me with a bullet so I can be a martyr. Ken, I don't know what we expect out of Israel. Yeah, well, first, you know, the Israeli government, you know, one of their PR techniques is to say human shields, human shields. Now, that actually is a technical term which requires coercively rounding people up 
The New York Times admits that's not happening. The BBC admits that not happening. There's actually no evidence that no that offense, Hamas but I'm not sure that I'm going to take the New York Times over the Israelis. I, I, well, I know both of them rather well, and yeah. I, I'm going to go with the Israelis. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ken, yeah. I, I'm sorry we're out of time. I would love to continue the conversation, yeah. and I do want to say I appreciate your being here. I appreciate your your uh, candor in, in expressing the views. And look, I, I one thing I absolutely agree. I don't want any innocent civilian to die, mm -hmm. but I think the way that we can end it immediately is for the entire world to express their outrage at Hamas, a known terrorist organization, by our own State Department definition, a terrorist organization, coming together and putting a stop to them. I hope that happens, and I appreciate yeah, you. No, I mean, every, everybody wants to see the war over with, but while it's being fought, it's important to stress not just to Hamas, but also to Israel, that you've got to follow the rules not to kill civilians, and neither one right now is following those rules. Yeah, well, I will say this. Israel has never celebrated the death of a civilian. I have so many instances of websites and leaders of governments in Qatar, Egypt and other places celebrating the death yeah. of Jews, but Israel, I find that repulsive. But see, Israel repulsive. doesn't prosecute the people who commit war crimes, which is a separate issue. And that's a big problem, too. They don't celebrate the deaths. They do nothing about them. They should be prosecuted. I disagree, but we'll have to take that up the next time. Very Ken, good. very nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, when I was in Israel last month, I was struck by the children's awareness of Israel's historical connection to God and their sense of history. And it reminded me of just how few of America's kids even understand the crucial role of God in U.S. history. I think we all ought to remember that God has had a role in making America into the incredible nation we are. Now, as part of the Learn Our History DVD series that I'm involved in, you can receive a free DVD of One Nation Under God. Get yours at FreeGodDVD.com. Well, he says Obamacare is on the ropes, and he believes that it's headed back to the Supreme Court. 